Hi, today we've got some PCBs from PCBWay and these are some LED strips that I've designed. So these are designed for 2835 sized LEDs of which there's a whole variety out there. Uh, I managed to get hold of some Cree LEDs with a CRI of 90 plus from Arrow at an extraordinarily low cost. I think they were getting rid of them because they're not available now, but I managed to get about a thousand of them for eight pounds, which is extremely cheap for those particular LEDs that I got. Uh, and these are strips that are 11 millimeters wide, which means that they should fit in those standard aluminium profiles that you can buy with the uh, diffused top cover. And I put these into a panel of six up, which makes the PCB manufacturer a lot more cost effective because you get a lot more PCBs compared to ordering that same number of them in just that original small form factor. Now my plan is to use these in some of the rooms in the house. I'm doing some work on those, in particular the bathroom at the moment. Uh, and I thought it'd be quite nice to have some low level lighting at night. And obviously one way that we can achieve that is by just driving them an extremely low current and that will provide a little bit of background light. However, something that I wanted to experiment with is um, coating these in some kind of glow in the dark pigment. So we've got some strontium illuminate here in uh, powder form. And I've 3D printed a little mold here, and this should just be the right size to fit one of these PCBs in here. And what I want to experiment with today after assembling up one panel of these PCBs is mixing up some clear epoxy resin with the recommended 10 to 15% amount of uh, this pigment. And then the idea is that while the LEDs are on, they're charging up that pigment, and then when you turn it off, you get a nice green glow. Um, this um, strontium illuminate can actually glow for about eight hours. So um, this is probably the best stuff that you can buy in terms of glow in the dark pigment. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how well it actually works. So that's what we're gonna test out today. So the schematic is extremely simple. It's just six series LEDs and three series current limiting resistors. And I've chosen three resistors there just to reduce the dissipation in each of those resistors. It means that we don't have to use such a chunky resistor and that particular part of the board isn't gonna get quite as hot. And then the PCB layout is pretty straightforward as well. So these 2835 LEDs dissipate the majority of their heat on the cathode. So what we've done is got a copper pad which is mainly heat sinking from this larger pad on the LED and then we've just got the resistors spread along there. And if you look at the data sheet for many of these LEDs, they don't actually tell you what the uh, drive current is. They say the test current, which might be something like 30 or 40 milliamps, and they show you what the luminous output is from that. And then it might say, it might also have the curve all the way up to something like 400% overdrive. And the reason why they do it in that way is because the maximum current drive actually depends on the amount of dissipation of that LED. So if we can get the heat out of it, you can actually drive those LEDs a lot harder. Now, one nice thing about Altium is the panelizing process is pretty straightforward. So it links the PCB layout that you create here. Then you create your panel, but even if you change the PCB design, it all gets updated in the panel here. And then we've created the Gerber files, and then we are able to upload that directly to PCB Way. So PCB way make it extremely simple to order your panelized PCBs. There's two methods really. So you can upload the Gerber file for just one individual PCB, check the panel by PCB way option, and then you put your requirements in the box here. So you can say I want a two by six panel and how many panels you want in total. And they'll come back to you with a quote for that once you submit the order. And you can choose the routing process. So you can either do V scoring or tabs or both and you just write any further instructions in the box. Or if you can if you can panelize it like we have done, you can just choose the panel by customer option and you can go ahead and the quote should be correct.
and those are working quite nicely and they're also really really bright. So here we can see the PCB fits really nicely into this little 3D printed part that I've made. So what we need to do next is mix up the resin. So we've got some water clear resin here. This is extremely clear, optically clear resin. And then we've got some hardener to go with it. Now, uh, the mixing ratio is only one to 2% of hardener to resin, which I think is gonna be a little bit tricky to measure. I might have to go in the kitchen and try and use the scales in there. Uh, but first of all, I'll add a bit of the powder to this beaker and make sure it's properly broken up because you can see there are a few chunks and we don't want any chunks in the mixture. And then we'll add the two. And then what we'll do is put this into a vacuum chamber to draw out any of the bubbles that have occurred during the mixing process. And that should give us a really nice clear resin. And then at that point, we'll pour it into the 3D printed part and then once again, put it in the vacuum chamber. Now, you might ask why not just pour it straight into here and then use the vacuum chamber on this directly. But that vacuum process can really expand the mixture if there's a lot of air trapped in it and it can foam up quite a lot. So the idea is to get the majority of the air out here and then when we pour this we need to pour it really carefully so that when we once again vacuum it we don't get quite so much of the bubbles. So to apply the vacuum to the resin we're using this vacuum chamber kit from Banggood. So what it is is a three gallon stainless steel container so you can use it for all kinds of things. Uh, and on the top, it's got this really thick acrylic circle. And between these two gaskets, that provides the vacuum seal. You do have to press down a little bit at the startup, and then the vacuum pulls it tight after that. We've got a vacuum gauge at the top, and then a tap to allow air into the chamber, and a tap to control the vacuum being drawn by the vacuum pump. And this kit does also come with this vacuum pump. It's only a single stage pump but a dual stage vacuum pump is not really needed in this type of application. We're not trying to draw it down to really, really low levels. Now, bear in mind, you do have to add your own vacuum oil to this pump. It doesn't come shipped with any, uh, but this is a 220 volt version and it costs about 120 pounds for the entire kit from Banggood. Now we can quite easily see after mixing in the glow in the dark pigment, it's no longer gonna be water clear, but it will be nice to get rid of those bubbles. So let's put it in the chamber it right in the middle there and we'll turn on the pump let's close the valve and it's now drawing a vacuum you can just about see the gauge there and we'll just leave this to run for about 10 minutes or so Now we're down to minus 30 inches of mercury, so we can turn off the valves, turn off the pump, and just leave this for about 10 minutes to get all those bubbles out. So it looks like that's stopped bubbling, so we can let the air back into the chamber. and then we should be able to take the epoxy out. Next, we'll carefully pour it into here with the PCB. And then once again, we'll put it in the chamber and start drawing a vacuum. So that poured really nicely into the mold. And as you can see, we've got a really nice bubble free finish. So overall looking pretty good. Let's power it up and see how it looks. And there we go, that's pretty bright. Uh, these are extremely warm white LEDs. I think these were either 2200 or 2700 Kelvin for a very warm white finish. And as you can see, that really nicely illuminates the bench. Right, so those LEDs have been on for about a minute now, so let's have a look how the glow-in-the-dark pigment looks when we turn it off. 
And there we go. That's actually really, really bright. This is the only light source in the room at the moment. And as you can see, we're getting really quite a nice glow around the light. So it'd be interesting to see how long that actually glows for. So maybe I'll just give it 10 minutes and see if it's still anywhere near that brightness. All right, so that's been 10 minutes and it's definitely gone down in brightness, but still very, very visible and giving off quite a decent amount of light. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that as a concept. It looks really nice. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'll set this up at night and then see how long it actually produces useful light for to see if it's worth going to the trouble of making up this epoxy and adding in the glow in the dark pigment. Now, obviously, uh, the strip lights in the room are going to be a lot longer than this. It's probably going to go around the perimeter of the room at a low level. And so I can't fit a couple of meters into that vacuum chamber. So in that instance, what I'm going to do is mix up an entire batch in a cup and just vacuum out all of the bubbles from the cup. And then when I actually pour it into the mold, as long as you're careful, I didn't actually notice there were too many bubbles, really. I think it was just the air that was caught underneath the PCB. So I think if we're careful with pouring it, we should be able to pour the entire batch and not introduce loads of bubbles into the resin. So that's just a little test of this concept. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave some comments if you've got any thoughts uh, about this project. Also, don't forget to visit PCB Way if you're thinking about getting some panelised PCBs made. Also, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters who are really helping to keep the channel going. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and until next time, thanks for watching.